Well, I hope you enjoyed our brief trip into the Zelda half of this game. By the way, we beat her. So here's a fun fact. The part time for Temple Mine is 90 minutes. I think I mentioned that. We wound up doing it in about 70 to 80 minutes, something like that. But I almost actually cheated. In fact, technically I did cheat. I went and I set the part time to be a bunch higher so that we could see this stuff regardless of how slowly I did it, but then I went and did it fast enough anyway. But oh, please, we're getting some lore. Oh man. It wouldn't do at all to interrupt the Crossworld's lore. Very self important as it is. But yeah, the plot of Crossworld is that literally seekers are just visiting all of these sites. That's it, that's basically it. And then we get radioed at each one by this guy, who tells us where we're going next. I mean, it's an MMO, what do you expect? Also, he gives us respec tokens. This is the only place in the game, I think, that gives you these for free, is when you finish plot missions. And I feel like it's... indicative of something that the game gives you respect tokens like this. But I don't know what. Considering that each one has their own set of circuit points, I don't... I mean, I don't want to say that they, I don't understand the point, but I'm going to gesture in that general direction. Like, it's not like you can fuck yourself because you spent all of your points on fire, yeah. and then, oh, you don't have any for the water grid now. Hmm. It's kind of a, a weird system, right? Because each of the, each of the boards is mostly self-contained. It's like, you spend most of your time in neutral, but you can kick into the elements whenever you want. So you, you literally have independent skill sets here. So it's not like there's ever, there was ever really going to be much point in prioritizing one or the other. The flip side of that is that when you respec, you can only reset one tree. So like, you can't get all your skill points back. You can reset your neutral or your fire. If you want to respect both, you've got to get two tokens. And we've only got one, and it's still real difficult to get more. In fact, I think it's impossible at this point in the game. And like, it's so weird, this game will let you turn the difficulty down to zero. You can become invincible, and you can make the puzzle timers go basically at a standstill. But you can't respect. Anyway, I really hope you were all paying attention to all of that lore, because that is literally going to be on the test. Our real reward for actually getting through a dungeon is getting to hang out with other players, and just seeing what they have to say about stuff. It's usually pretty good. I think you might be playing the wrong game. I don't know, this genre is just kind of notorious for this kind of level design. I feel like if you're not so good with heights and whatnot, then uh, maybe like an AR MMO isn't for you. Like, just generally speaking. Maybe not.
Also, I don't know, meleeing the bombs is a pretty good idea, honestly. Like, lining up the shot takes time, and you gotta hit that guy with a bunch of them. Like, you don't have time to shoot them all accurately. Man, I know people who are, like, they phrase this kind of stuff with spoiler warning, say that, oh, I don't want to spoil you solving this weird arbitrary dungeon puzzle. And those people are weird. If you're gonna give me a hint, give me a hint. I feel like if I'm asking you for a hint, I, you know, that that is inherently, I want a spoiler. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I told you I was gonna get this eventually. There actually is a pretty decent ranged art in the fire tree. And well, it's a flamethrower. It's literally is a is a throw art. It throws fire. What what do you want from me? It's actually not that great for damage, but it hits a big area, it can hit like arbitrarily many targets in that area, and it has pretty decent burn infliction. So broadly, I'm a fan. Anyway, now that we have fire and we're free of our time pressure, we can basically go and clean this place up. I didn't actually miss very much, it's really just a handful of chests and a couple of like extra I don't wanna I don't really wanna call them puzzles. But yeah, whatever. Anyway, I could do some stuff to actually line up these pillars, or I could just do a little speedrun tech. Or at least try to, it's a little bit fiddly. But yeah, if you shield in midair, you can dash out of it. And you can absolutely cheat at jumping by doing this, it's great. It seemed like a lot less effort than actually lining up those pillars properly. Yeah, yeah, that checks out. This is that room, and we've just done the certain things. It turns out the certain things was just kill every enemy in here. This might seem like an arbitrarily hidden detail, but like the chest appeared on that little square of floor. Oh yeah, finally getting this by the way. So there's usually some kind of a hint in any room that has a hidden chest in it. It'll either be a, a very specifically, suspiciously prominent pattern on the floor, or it will be like a little row of lights that seem to go to nowhere. Anyway, here's how you use burn. Any questions? Nope. Excellent. I mean, I think the, I think the bit ring has some questions, but other than that, yeah, uh, this game. There's a lot of numbers that come out of things. There's no such thing as a number that's too high, but there absolutely could be such a thing as too many numbers. Anyway, that's it for Temple Mine. Let's do some phone calls. Yeah, that's worth a shot. These guys are all online. Their dialogue doesn't update quite as often as maybe you'd hope if you've recently played a Metal Gear game and you're thinking that this is going to be like a codec. But they got a decent amount of stuff. That said, I'm pretty sure this one actually branches on whether or not you've beaten Temple Mine. So, I don't know, maybe it's actually more complicated than I realise. I appreciate that she got very, very excited to tell us that she had a quiz for us. I mean, she is exactly the kind of person to be excited to have a quiz for us. I mean, she literally runs a guild that's like, hey, let's figure out all the lore of the game. I think it's pretty in keeping for her. Anyway, first things first, let's go turn in all of this 
laser TNT. Yeah, you know, just casually carrying around a couple bushels of laser TNT as you fight the boss. It's no big deal. This quest actually gives us a circuit point. There's like four quests in the entire game that do this, and it is specifically only a neutral circuit point. So now we have more circuit points on the neutral tree than on the fire tree, so... Hooray? Anyway, clearing out Temple Mine gives us a whole bunch of new quests to do. Which I think somebody actually told us on Bergen Trail. Now remember, Jean? Okay, so I know we just got done with the dungeon, but what if... Just bear with me here. What if we basically just went and did another dungeon? I mean... Yeah, sure, checks out, let's do it. We all know how much we love puzzles in this game, so let's just skip the pretense. We will be doing puzzles forever. We might as well do it for people. Now, these guys are players, not NPCs, so they don't get to pretend to understand us in the same way that NPCs do. And yet we seem to be getting on just fine anyway. So, how do you feel about block pushing? My my soul just there I I have nothing but admiration for the block pushing puzzle. Well, I've got good news for you. This particular block, by the way, is important because we're gonna need it in order to get that chest that's floating in that other room. So you've gotta to remember to set this one up right. It's going to be important. It's probably the only particularly tricky part of this puzzle. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a puzzle. The whole thing's kind of tricky, but that's the only bit that's like a trick, you know? Not that there aren't other very important details, like the fact that you can walk in a space that's exactly, and I do mean exactly, half the width of one of these boxes. So, it is possible to solve this room, kind of. And it's probably not necessary, but I'm just wired to try and do it anyway. Because I'm just terminally like that. And are you going to tell me it isn't satisfying to just fully solve a room like this? I mean, this is a lot of boxes. Oh yeah, she wasn't kidding. Anyway, don't miss the single, single half elevation in that little corner, because that's the only way to get up and jump on stuff. Anyway, make sure not to mess this jump up. Ha, <laughs> just kidding, invisible plot wall, fuck you. You know where to start with this. Maybe let's start with the bit where Jean is apparently having a net positive recruitment effect for these guys. How does that work? I wasn't aware that who would. Well, I mean, that's good. Yeah, who, oh, I don't even know. I mean, I, I personally like the whole, hi, we're blatant, why can't we just do the money laundering anymore? That's unfortunate. 
You okay there, Emily? You... Emily? Good? We good? We're all good? Okay. You know what? Good luck with this. You know, maybe it's for the better that we can't speak and, like, tell her what's going on here. Yeah. Yeah, let's just not. By the way, there is a there actually are a couple of chests that we missed earlier. Shocking, I know. But it turns out that sometimes there's just a little bit of stuff for you to jump on. Like it's not a, a huge navigation puzzle, it's just did you notice the thing that you can jump on? That's that's like 70% cross code. It's not quite full cross code, but it's something. By the way, remember this guy. Remember that there's a guy named Kratos on a crate in the monastery. It's not actually going to be important later, but it is going to be notable. Was this early enough that he could have called us boy? Or was that, or was that too blatant and too late? Uh, hmm. I mean, too blatant is obviously not the case because of Sonic, but... I mean, yeah, the... No, no, yeah, this is not this is not the kind of game that really acknowledges too blatant. Uh, so technically, the the full release of Crosscode was in like I, I want to say July 2018, but it spent ages in early access and had a lot of episodes, and this was one of the early ones. So this probably would have come out in like 2017. So probably too early for boy memes. I mean, we have to be extremely rude to get Icy's attention. Which is fitting, because what she's going to give us to do is also very rude. Eh, you know. Like deserves like. Maybe you glossed over the bit in the quest description that advised us that modifiers are not active during these trials. So, despite my attempt to subvert it with equipment, we actually do have to deal with some ice physics for this. I guess they were just really insistent that we have to do it at some point. I don't know, I think maybe if they were so confident in it, they could have just not had the Ice Walkers be in the game. Anyway, the deal here is pretty apparent. Yeah, so we're just locked into permanent fire mode right now, then, right? I mean, we're not locked into it. We could switch out if we wanted, but... There's no reason why would to, we? though. Yeah. Like, we don't do enough stuff to get the element overload up. Like, I'm pretty sure if we if we wanted, we could deliberately overload ourselves, but, you know, why would we? But there's just not enough cores for you to be firing continuously, so you're not really at much risk. But yeah, a, a couple of these things are actually subvertible, like, you don't have to deal with that many icicles. There's a lot of weird little ledges that you can jump on and not fall if you want. But I, I, I keep coming back to why would you? So let's just say this is a fire challenge. Anyway, this last bit is kind of a fucker, but there's a rhythm to it that you can learn. This actually was literally the first attempt. Okay, so see the little next task notification up there? 
I don't even know where to start with this. Like, for one, it called him Kratos with a K, which, you know, that's not, that's not how that works. And also, we're not supposed to be talking to him, we're talking to Icy. But, but developers, what are you doing? Really just shameful. But yeah, here he is. He's still here. Absolutely nothing to do with this quest. Maybe they were gearing up to do a reference, but somehow decided not to. That doesn't really sound very on brand for them, though. I mean, we have seen them occasionally do that. I'm, uh, looking squarely at the Metal Gear. I, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they only did that to, like, further the joke, and so they could set it up for the trophy. Oh, yeah, no, no, I absolutely believe that, you know, when they show restraint, it is so that they can go even stupider later on. But they can do it. It's technically possible. Anyway, this trial, like the one before it, also has a couple of extra challenges that we can do. And once again, you do not have to do both of these at the same time. Although, having said that, there actually is a trophy for doing all of these in the minute 45 with the modifiers active, so... Yeah. Anyway, this one actually did take me a couple tries, so I had to do an absolutely flawless edit just then to cut into the final take. But yeah. This is extremely annoying. As you could probably have guessed, the deal with Extra Frosty is that it just puts even more ice everywhere. So, you're gonna have a time dealing with it all. Actually, dealing with them isn't as big a problem as the fact that, for the most part, you have to stop in order to slash them, and it just completely messes with your flow. Like, 8 attempts out of 10 I get shot here because I wait a tiny bit too late to slash one of these and I wind up stopping and then I get hit by the bullet. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't think this does not strike me as the problem being that you're going to stop and you're going to get hit and that's what's going to fuck you. Yeah. And of course sometimes you can survive getting hit, but yeah, it's a whole thing. Also, yeah, this last bit is long, and you basically don't get to... If you, if you are trying to do both of these challenges, you, are, you have a very short uh, error margin to deal with it. Honestly, this particular bit has that speedrun kind of quality to it, where actually the safest thing that you can do is to just charge at a stupid speed. You'll probably be fine. Probably. And I guess notably, this bit is actually identical to the uh, regular Frost variant. So I don't really know what the point of it is. Anyway, I missed the, the double challenge by uh, a quarter of a second. I'm pretty irritated about that. So I went and I did the, the regular non-Frosty version off-camera. Yeah, I was gonna say, it sounds like you're gonna have to go back and do it again. Yep. I mean, like I said, it wasn't actually necessary to do all of those in one run. I just felt like it because uh, this game has broken me. <laughs> 